I saw Barry about a week before he died. And he said, we had a good friendship. And then for two hours, he reminisced about the past. And there is a, just one slight amendment to what Robin was saying. I've known Barry for 70 years. And we first met at the uh, in the choir at St. Mark's Church, Darling Point. <laughs> and we were choristers together. Um, and uh, I was very close to Barry, certainly for the first sort of 10 years after that, and perhaps the next 10 years as well. But then he had other friendships, of course, with uh, Anne and Paul and Jim and Carolyn and so on. Um, and uh, so I didn't see as much of him. But to really understand Barry, I think, as added to the talk, uh, you've got to look at his background. And he, he would tell the story of his mother, who was apparently going off to meet her fiance. And whilst on this trip, she met Barry's father. He was swept off his feet by her. They were married shortly after. And she went to New Guinea, where he was a gold miner at that time. And I think possibly he'd gone up for the gold, a lot of gold rush. Um, so, um, Barry had the idea that life was very romantic um, and he approached life that way and particularly, I mean, I, I've never thought of myself like this before, but I can sort of see I was a bit of a wingman, really, um, because all the ladies are here. Uh, I, I was going to discuss a number of them. <laughs> there were all these other ladies. They're <laughs> here as well. <laughs> so I don't know that I can quite do that. <laughs> um, but um, just as to that, so, uh, I mean, being in the choir, uh, uh, we, uh, we sang on Sunday, of course. Uh, we had choir practice on Thursday. And I suppose from 10 or 11 or something, I used to go, to, I used to go down where Barry was living in um, Double Bay. Um, but what had happened, of course, was when war was declared, um, Mr. MacDonald, uh, I think it was commissioned, uh, and stayed in New Guinea and they were repatriated. Um, and um, Gladys came from uh, a large Queensland family and she was oh, particularly, uh, her husband died in New Guinea during the war and she was left alone with three young children. Um, and uh, she was, uh, she was a tough lady. She was a very attractive girl, a low woman, um, and um, um, what she, when she came down to Sydney, she started dealing real estate in the late forties, and she was quite successful. In it. That meant that for the first sort of ten years of their life, they probably went moved to about three or four houses, mainly in the eastern suburbs, largely in Double Bay or Bondi Junction. Um, so that was a bit disruptive, but not really. Um, and uh, uh, what she managed, really, I mean, um, to send them, all three of them at some stage of their lives, if not the whole of their schooling, 
do private schools. Um, and she had well, she fed for me for 10 years, although she used to occasionally say, That's, you, you're not here again, are you? <laughs> but but uh, uh, we had a pretty good arrangement. That lasted, I might say, for until we were about 20, when in fact uh, I did sort of take leave of her a little because Barry and I and Bob Gordux, who we met at Sydney University, uh, for having a bit of a party, we were about 19, I think, or 20. And uh, yes, well, anyway, Barry said that um, Mrs. McDonald wasn't coming home. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, uh, we all uh, repaired separately to various parts of the building, and she did come home. <laughs> and Gladys um, um, was. Um, you know, she was Irish and Protestant, um, and she had a very firm set of morals. <laughs>